Hello there and welcome to another portrait painting demonstration. My name is Yupari and I'd like to welcome you into this uh, painting. So I'm going to be using flake white, titanium white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. And if you want to know exactly what materials I'll be using for this painting, just go ahead and scroll down to the description box below and you'll be able to see that typed out for you. So I'm going to be starting off with a little piece of uh, vine charcoal. This is just simply some uh, random medium vine charcoal that I had sitting around. So what I'm going to do is use it to get the placement of the portrait. And then once I have the placement, I'll jump into the uh, colors. So let's suppose the top of the head is there and the bottom of the head is here. So I'm going to stand back and I think that's all right. So now I'm going to look at the hairline. So the hairline will fit right around there. Now let's look at this little angle here. So now I'm going to start to uh, block in the envelope. So here's a large line here for the side of the hair and it comes down to here. And I'm using simple straight lines and angles, just straight lines and angles, trying to simplify the form. The goal here is to simplify. Don't want to do too much. So let's suppose that, I think maybe one little line here, one little line there. All right, now the side of the face is somewhat about like this. Curves into here. And here we have another straight line coming across there. And again, I don't want any details to start off with. Just very simple straight lines and angles. This comes out to about there. Let's say this shape comes out to about here. And let's see. Let's have one large straight line connecting across like this. Here we have a little angle for the neck. Let's just unify this whole mass. This is probably just going to be one large area of dark. Now that the shoulder will fall a little bit higher on a horizontal than the chin. So the shoulder will actually fall about there. Let's get our uh, little piece of paper towel. And this is the beauty of using uh, charcoal. It's really easy and forgiving to push around. Even easier than oil paint. So let's move this down here. This comes out to about there. Now let's again look at the shape for the top of the head. Notice how I don't have any indication of the features yet. Just trying to get the large picture established first. Comes out to about there. Now she doesn't have too much hair on the top. Uh, that is the distance from the hairline to the back of the head isn't that large so I have to take that into account. Comes to about there. Somewhat like that. That's a little closer. This probably even comes down to about here. All right, now I think we're ready to start to uh, put in some information uh, for the features. So let's start off with the center line. Center line is right here, dividing the middle of the face. And this is telling us that the model is turned in a three-quarter turn relative to us, meaning we're going to be seeing more of this side of the face than this side of the face. Now, uh, for the next little mark, I'm going to go ahead and make a simple little axis mark here for the axis of the eyebrow, and another one here very lightly. Notice how I'm making these lines very light for the axis of the eyes. And I'm making all of these decisions by eye. 
letting my eye uh, be the judge, not trying to copy what I'm look at, looking at. Rather, I'm trying to interpret in terms of simple shape. A little mark there for the mouth. And let's stand back. Uh, now, let's go ahead and put in a little accent. So here's a little accent mark for the side of uh, the eye socket to the left of your screen. And then let's look at the eye socket to the right of your screen. Very simple there. Again, just using straight lines and angles. And the idea when you're starting off with charcoal like this um, is not to get attached to your lines. Rather, um, get the information that you're looking for, the simple information that you're looking for uh, with these simple straight lines and angles, knowing that you're gonna paint right on top of this. You're gonna build onto this. So now I notice that there's gonna be an angle somewhat like this for the eyebrows. So let's move this one a little bit higher up. So that shape, I just moved it a little bit higher up. Let's go ahead with the paper towel and I'm just trying to look at the structure of the eye socket. I'm not really thinking about the um, little details surrounding the eyelids and all that. I'm thinking about the large shape and how everything is going to fit within that large shape. So now then, I think this eyebrow is actually gonna come out like that. That's a little closer. And again, let's look at the axes for the eyes. And it's at somewhat of an angle. So it's at somewhat of an angle like this. So I need to keep that angle into account. Now let's go back to the nose. So I'm going to go ahead and follow the center line. And let's say that the nose is going to produce a cast shadow. So we're going to draw in a simple, uh, almost parallelogram shape for the cast shadow of the nose, somewhat like this. And the idea, remember, is not to get attached to your lines, uh, rather to figure out your basic placement of these shapes. And we're gonna build on top of these shapes. That's the goal of uh, this type of start. Now let's look at the side of the nose. Very simply, I'm just going to leave it like this. Very much like a parallelogram. Just think about it as a simple little rectangular structure for now. And let's go ahead and follow this shape here. Uh, so this is the side plane of the face, so the zygomatic region. Zygomatic, again, is just a uh, another way to say the cheekbone. So that's going to be the shape for the cheekbone. Let's go ahead and um, just eliminate some unnecessary marks here. Just trying to keep these marks rather simple. So, okay, so this is the side plane of the face, so the zygomatic region, so the cheekbone region. Let's go ahead and imagine ourselves following all the way across to the other side and asking ourselves, does this shape make sense? So does this shape fit in accordance to this shape? And I'm pretty sure that it does. Now, again, this is the idea of not copying, but rather interpreting. So I'm not looking at the photo reference and saying, okay, this line goes exactly like this. I'm looking at it and seeing if this shape is relating to this shape. That's more important to me. Trying to get to the essence of the portrait. Now the shape comes out somewhat about like that. Now for the eyes, I'm gonna be very, very minimalistic. So here we have a mark for one uh, tear duct, and then here we have a mark for another. Now then, let's look at just a simple little shape. And remember, we're gonna go right over top of this. So don't get attached. This comes out to about here. And let's just let that be our indication for uh, where the eyes might fit. Now, Let's look at the mouth. So there's gonna be a simple shape coming out like this. 
and coming down here for the bottom of the mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, notice that the distance from the root of the nose to the top middle portion of the mouth, so this little distance here, uh, visually is uh, smaller. So that is from here to here is smaller than from here to here. That is the distance for the chin is a little bit larger. So let's just keep that in mind. So let's look at the angle of the mouth. If anything, let's just try to get the angle of the mouth correct. And again, don't get attached to these lines. Check this out. I can just take it right out and put it right back and reevaluate that angle. What I really want is that angle. Not worried about the um, exact outline just yet. Focused on the angle. I'm focused on the angle of the mouth the placement of it. So, and I, I think it comes out a little further, something like that. Let's go ahead and move this shape up. Now then let's go ahead and reassess the chin. So again, following that center line, the chin is a little more flat here and kind of at an angle. And then it turns in like this. And again, not trying to get an exact replica of what I'm looking at. I'm trying to interpret these shapes. I think it's, I think it's more fun to work that way. Imagine spending all your life just copying. I mean, there's a time and a place to copy something exactly. Uh, that is if you're trying to create a commission painting or something like that. Um, but with this, we're trying to just have fun. Let's just have fun with these shapes. Now let's make this shape a little more exacting. Comes in like that. Now it's getting even closer. At this point, let's go ahead and uh, put the charcoal down. Let's get some large brushes. So we have here uh, some size six filbert flat brushes and we have an assortment of brushes. Let's just start off with the size four uh, filbert bristle brushes. So let's go ahead and uh, without any medium, let's just get some of the dark shapes placed in there. So we have some ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue and just these colors. Let's go ahead and block in the dark shapes. Now, you're going to notice that I tend to make my marks in a very diagonal fashion. So diagonal like this. And um, the reason I make my brush strokes in this fashion, in this direction, is pretty much to cut back on the glare. I don't want there to be too much glare while I'm filming. And that's it. That's the only reason. So let's just fill in these dark shapes. Comes out to about like that. Again, this is a very small little shape there, so got to take that into account. Very small. And another thing I'm going to use to help minimize glare is a fan brush. So this is a little fan brush. This helps me minimize glare. And remember I said don't get attached to the outlines. Again, we just use the charcoal to place the portrait. And to try and figure out roughly where the features might fit. So again, just the ultramarine blue and raw umber. We're making our way down here, the shape. Now let's look at the shape. We don't even have to know what we're looking at. Let's just observe the shape. This comes out to about here. Brave brushing it. We're brave brushing it. I'm not afraid to make a mark. And that's the key. Don't worry about what other people may say about your paintings. 
Enjoy the process. That's really the most important thing. Now this comes down to about there. Right about there. And if you're wondering what the tone of my panel is, it's just a gray, just neutral gray acrylic paint. That's all I use to tone this panel. Now I'm just looking at this shape here. Sometimes it helps to squint your eyes when looking at the uh, shapes of light and dark. So that comes out to about there. And like I said, we're gonna unify that whole dark shape there. So back to the Burnt Umber Ultramarine Blue. And let's go ahead and just cover the rest of this. All right, so we lost a little bit of the bottom of the chin, not to worry. So let's go ahead and use our paper towel and let's just push it down. Very simple, right? Just pushing it down and there you go. Now we're going to get the bottom of the chin back. Tell you what, that shape um, is a little more like this, a little more on an, more in an angle or in an angle like that. There we go. The shape is even smaller. Let's push that in there. Now let's fill in the uh, color for the background. So I'm going to use again the ultramarine blue. And this time I'm going to switch to uh, ivory black. So just ultramarine blue, ivory black, and a little bit of titanium white. Ultramarine blue, ivory black. Titanium white. We're just covering the masses. So I'm going to go ahead um, and just cover this background color now. And covering it to about here should be pretty good for now. All right, so now let's get into some of the flesh tones. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by mixing some colors with my palette knife. Uh, so let's mix the lightest light regions first. So somewhere about here. All right, so let's use yellow ochre and titanium white. Just yellow ochre and titanium white. Now titanium white is very useful in bring, bringing value up uh, very quickly. So um, it only takes a little bit of the titanium white to really blast the value up. But in the mid-tones you'll notice that I will probably stick uh, to using flake white. Flake white is a transparent white. Titanium white is an opaque white, so you can use more flake white in the middle tones without raising the value too much. So just a little touch more of the um, titanium white, and that ought to do it. Now let's get to a uh, darker color. So I'm going to mix up a value scale of flesh tone. So now I'm going to look at the half tones. So probably somewhere around here, here, here and here. So I'm gonna start off with my cadmium red. Use a little bit of flake white. Notice how I can use a lot of it. I just used a megaton of flake white and we're good. All right, so I added a little bit of burnt umber. So we had first was cadmium red medium 
then a megaton of flake white and then a little bit of burnt umber to bring down the intensity of the cadmium red. Now I'm going to make it a smidgen warmer. Little touch there, little touch of our alizarin crimson permanent. And there we have that color. Not sure if it's exactly what I want, uh, but just let's just leave that be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a darker flesh tone. So notice I used, used what was on the palette knife, burnt umber and yellow ochre. And of course, back to the flake white. And there you have that. Now that's one step darker. So that's pretty close now to these side planes here. So there we have that. Now let's get an even darker color. So let's just take this, mix it together, a little more burnt umber. And I'm pretty much looking at the dark lights just as we approach the shadow. So here and here. So now a little more warmth. So let's just add a tiny bit more warmth. So let's uh, go ahead and use the Alizarin Crimson Permanent. So there we have that. Now for the shadow colors, the shadows are pretty dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and just burnt umber, some yellow ochre, burnt umber, yellow ochre, a little bit of sap green, a little bit of sap green. And then for my really dark areas on the portrait, I'm going to have Burnt Umber, Alizarin Crimson Permanent, Ivory Black. All right, so now let's get, uh, let's switch into the brushes to apply these values. So I'm gonna start off with a fairly large brush and I'm gonna start off somewhere in the middle between these two. So let's just use this now and then lighter in the middle not using any medium right now, just the paint. A little bit lighter. So let's go ahead and switch to this lighter value. Notice how we're already starting to create a transition there very quickly. And that's the goal. Let's try to mix these transitions very quickly. We're gonna work very sculpturally with this one. This comes out to about there even darker now, so let's switch to that one. Pretty much with the same old brush. And there you have that transition there. Now let's look at the side over here. Let's pick up a little more of that color. And there you go. There we have that shape. Notice how we're already starting to get the uh, illusion of volume here. Now let's use the fan brush just to hopefully eliminate some of the glare. And um, it's a little lighter here, so I'm, just, I'm pretty much just using the same brush. Notice how I'm just picking and choosing from the colors that I already mixed up on the palette. So this area right here is lighter. This is gonna be the frontal uh, region of the forehead. So this is gonna be the frontal eminence. A little lighter here and it's lighter because these planes are facing the light a little bit more. And as a consequence, as we move further down, um, these shapes over here are going to be a little bit darker. So just moving back and forth between these mixtures. See how we have a little bit more dark here and that's because it's moving away from the light but then it gets lighter over here because it's moving closer to the light it's all about picking and choosing the angle the angles that the planes are making in relation to the light source now let's go ahead and look at the concavity of the eye socket 
and it's somewhat over there. So again, we're just picking and choosing off of the palette. So this is the concavity of the eye socket. Remember we placed in those accents. We um, located roughly where the features were going to fit in that simple little charcoal sketch and that was so that we could come in with paint like we're doing now and um, sculpting out the forms. Key word, sculpting out the forms. Imagine that this is a, a large um, block of clay and we're molding the clay to make it resemble the large structures of the face. So again, the eye socket is going to be a little bit darker. So the eye sockets are going to be a little bit darker, uh, but they're going to be a little bit lighter over here. And again, let's not worry about any of the details. We can always add the details on top of this. And um, a nice little useful tip, try not to use your medium so quickly. Try to let it be just paint. And I'll, I'll let you know when I start to use a medium or if I even use one. So a little bit darker here. And we're going to just kind of guesstimate uh, where the eyes are going to fit. And we're going to just use a single brush stroke for those, those little things. So one little shape there and another little shape here. Again, not entirely sure if that's where they're going to fit, but we're going to start with something. The key term here is simplicity and using simplicity to uh, achieve a resemblance to the model. Now switching brushes, notice how this brush started getting some darker tones. So now I switched to a different brush, a clean brush, uh, just so I don't have to keep um, going back and forth and cleaning the brushes. can make this thing go a lot faster. So it's much lighter here. So we're adding a lighter color and a warmer color. Now let's go ahead and look at this little side plane here. And again, we're just looking at the large shapes of value and color. Now let's uh, get a little bit of this color. You'll notice how I'm switching from the dark and the light brush. And we're just trying to get the large shapes placed in there. This is one way you can move very quickly towards a uh, resemblance to the model. So again, this shape is going to come down here and there's actually going to be a lighter plane right there, lighter plane there. So this is going to be a little darker there. Now I'm going to switch to a different brush, get some of this dark, and we're just going to place this little parallelogram looking shape here. And don't worry, we're going to come back into that a little later and make these shapes much more specific. But for now, we're just trying to cover. So now I'm going to start to take from the colors on the palette. So I've kind of exhausted the colors that I mixed up with the palette knife. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take directly from the uh, colors that I have here and start to mix. So this plane is really light. So notice how I just took right from there. And now switching to a darker brush, let's go ahead and get these planes here. And there you have it. There's this little transition here for the zygomatic uh, region. All right, so just taking what's on this brush, we do have a lighter plane here. Just taking that color, putting that in there. A little bit lighter there. Now, there's a certain mindset in portraiture um, where you want to have 
the likeness of the model as quickly as possible and you want to make the portrait as aesthetically appealing as possible and that's something that um, can kind of be uh, a hindrance let's not focus on the aesthetics right now uh, let's focus on just simple shape and then we'll build on top of that how about that so let's get into this little darker shape here fit that in right there so it's going to be a little bit lighter brighter and more pink over there probably not that pink so let's use some uh, burnt umber and our flake just to adjust the warmth of that color and there we have that so now for the the mouth let's look at the structure containing the mouth first so let's look at the orbicularis oris it's the little muscle right about here that contains uh, the structure or the shape of the mouth so this is going to be the bottom plane of our orbicularis oris and then the top plane of the orbicularis oris will be somewhere about here somewhere about there notice it's kind of too pink so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the burnt umber and the flake white burnt umber flake white and let's make it a little cooler with the ultramarine blue just a little bit and there we have it but still that value isn't quite right so I'm going to use titanium white notice even a tiny bit of titanium white can really blast can really bring something light really fast but it can also sacrifice color so we got to be careful where we use our titanium white so again we're pretty much brave brushing this completely eliminated uh, the shape for the mouth we're looking at the large underlying structure kind of learning how to let go a little bit all right, so let's sculpt out this plane here. It's a little lighter here. And that is because that's the top plane of the chin. Switching back to a dark tone. Let's go ahead and reestablish this little shape here. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the alizarin crimson permanent. And this shape, let's just push it all the way out. Pushing it all the way out going to come back in with that dark uh, valued brush so with the burnt umber the ivory black the alizarin crimson permanent let's just push this shape in there like that and while we're at it let's go ahead with the lighter tone let's add in this shape here for the neck it's lighter than this, but it's still darker than this. That's all that's going on in my head at this point in terms of the tone of this value. And you know what? It might even be a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and add some burnt umber, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and some sap green. A little darker there. Going back to that dark and let's just push that in there now let's look at this whole little plane here for the side of the face so I'm going to use the flake white use pretty much the color that was on this brush and let's just go ahead and paint in some some side planes very simple little chop right there uh, let's use some sap green a little bit of burnt umber paint that in there and you'll notice um, there's quite a bit of work that goes into the middle stages uh, whenever you're creating a portrait painting the middle stage is really where it where stuff happens now I think that you can start a portrait just about in any fashion uh, you can start off like this you can start off with a transfer drawing you can start with a burnt umber um, 
sketch like I usually do. Uh, but you'll often find that the middle stages of the portrait tends to be where all the stuff happens. Where the likeness is attained or where the likeness is lost. Where the portrait is made or where the portrait is broken. And uh, I've, I've destroyed quite a bit of uh, portraits. So it, it's really about going in there, I think, with a brave brush. Understanding uh, what you're looking at. And enjoying the process. I think that's the most important thing. So it's a, a little bit lighter there. A little more yellow ochre and titanium white. Let's get into this plane here. So this is the uh, plane for the top region of the zygomatic. That is a nice way of saying the cheekbones. Now let's switch to a smaller brush. Let's take some of this value, mix it with this one. And now we have this little bottom shape here for the lower eyelid. And let's follow through the other side there. And at the same time, let's go ahead and get the dark brush. So let's add a little bit more of the a laser and crimson permanent and just go ahead and reestablish this shadow, this cast shadow. It's going to be a little bit darker. So now we're getting our values uh, and fine tuning them, fine tuning these values in relation to one another. And again, I'm using this fan brush to help eliminate glare, but it also uh, creates kind of a soft edge, which is something I, uh, kind of like. Alright, so now I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red medium and some flake white into the middle region of the palette. Let's throw in some warm colors here. So now that we're starting to articulate our colors a little better, uh, so now that we're starting to focus on our uh, colors a little more and our values, uh, let's talk about warm and cool colors. As a consequence, I'm going to let this little band of value be uh, my warm flesh tones. Let's take this dark here and put it in here. Now that's the nice thing about a palette knife. I can just do that pretty much like... Uh, uh, with your computer copy and paste right okay so these are going to be my warm flesh tones these are going to be my cool flesh tones so i'm starting off with the titanium white burnt umber for that let's actually use a little bit more paint and it's okay if we just take from uh, what was on the palette knife just there so these are going to be our cool flesh tones and our warm flesh tones. And these are going to be, this is going to be how we're going to study uh, the balance between warm flesh tones and cool flesh tones. So now back to the burnt umber, a little bit more of the titanium white, and a little bit of sap green. Now I don't want to get too greenish with cooler flesh tones. Cool flesh tones are a little risky. Uh, so if you go greenish, you can paint kind of like a zombie. Um, so with cooler flesh tones, I'm actually going to err towards the yellowish tones. With warm flesh tones, I'm going to err towards the reddish pinkish tones. So a little bit of burnt umber, some yellow ochre. Burnt umber, yellow ochre, back to burnt umber, a little bit of a lizard and crimson permanent, and then making it darker, I'm going to switch back to the burnt umber, and these are going to be my cooler flesh colors, and again, the warmer flesh colors, let's go ahead and just remix 
uh, these colors are going to consist of more pinkish colors. Uh, so that's too hot. So what I'm going to do is add the uh, titanium white, a little bit of sap green. Uh, so that's why I have sap green. It's very useful uh, to neutralize a hot color very quickly. It's kind of the uh, advantage of having a sap green in there. All right, so now you're going to see how these are going to be more, uh, these are going to be closer to the pinkish side. And let's actually use the flake white. Remember, I like to use flake white towards the middle. Back to the burnt number. These colors are actually going to be very similar. So the darker I go, the more these colors are going to get kind of unified. Um, now just to uh, experiment a little bit more with the color, I'm going to go ahead and make a transition of hot colors. And from this transition of colors, I'm also going to attain the uh, brightest pinks. So this is going to be a very bright pink, and I'm probably going to use that Maybe just a touch of that when I get to the lips. And notice how I'm letting the values get darker the further down I go on the palette. And that's on purpose. I want to have a nice variety of colors and values to pick and choose from. And I recommend doing this uh, with your palette knife. It's just much faster, really. All right, so down here, I'm gonna use more of my Alizarin Crimson Permanent. In the middle, I'm gonna use a little bit more of the Cadmium Red. And then to make this transition a little bit more even, I'm going to use the Flake White right about here. And then you're wondering, Yupari, why are you spending all this time mixing these colors? And that's because I'm gonna to try to rapid fire between these colors minimizing the time I spend mixing and uh, optimizing the time I actually spend painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take all of this color and I'm gonna mix some very dark darks. So the alizarin permanent with the ivory black, just alizarin permanent and ivory black. It's going to give us my very dark dark from the warm flesh tones and I don't think I'm going to get any darker than that because I don't want to paint anything that's straight black. All right, we spent all our time mixing those colors. Now what are we going to do with them? So I'm going to be, instead of using my uh, large brushes, I kind of exhausted what I could do with the size 6 brushes. Notice how big this brush is. So now we're going to switch to some smaller brushes now, some size uh, two round brushes. Let's go right into the warmer colors. So let's go ahead and contrast now between warm and cool colors. So I'll tell you what, this shape is going to be warmer down here. That shape is going to be cooler. Let's take right from there. And remember my cooler colors tend to be closer to yellow not green because I'm not trying to paint a zombie. And again, just going to eliminate glare. So we're going to kind of mix between these two for this area. Again, this is a warm color. Fan brush. Now let's look at the, again, this shape for the Clavella. This is going to be a darker color, and it's also going to be a little cooler. Now we're going to be moving all around the portrait, really, so... I think it's, it's a good idea to work the entire picture Let's look at the concavity of the eye socket. So I use the warmer flesh tone for that. Let's actually take some of this. So notice I'm kind of moving back and forth. All right, so this is gonna be a little warmer, not that hot. So let's go ahead, cooler color. Very simple. 
that is for the concavity of the eye socket. Now let's look at, uh, let's take a little bit of a cooler. So I'm actually going to use a little more uh, yellow ochre into this mixture. I think it needs that. All right, so over here, there's a lighter accent. Back to the fan brush. All right, so right about here, there's going to be a darker color, darker in value, but a little bit cooler. So let's take from this one. Still needs to get darker. Let's just take from that. And notice how we're very quickly and efficiently going to start to sculpt out these forms. It's a lot of fun to work this way. It's one of my favorite ways of painting a portrait. This comes out to about there. And it's going to be a little bit cooler here, contrasting my cool colors and my warm colors. A little bit lighter here. Not that bright, so let's go ahead and take that color right there, and it's also a little bit warmer darker over here. Fan brush. Now let's paint in this little light accent. A little light accent right there. Fan brush. Now let's go ahead and reassess the uh, orbicularis oris containing the mouth. So this shape is going to get a little bit darker down here, but it's going to get a little bit lighter up here. And it's actually going to be a little bit warmer, so let's take from this one. And right now the paint is really opaque. It's still very opaque. I'm not going too transparent yet. Fan brush. So let's go ahead and put in some shapes for the mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and use my darker dark. That's going to go there for one side. And I'm actually going to work back and forth between this dark here and this dark. Notice how we're building the specificity onto these shapes. So now this, uh, let's use a little bit more warmth. This is going to come out like that. And this is going to come into here. So that's the other side of the mouth. Let's just go ahead with this dark, just fill that in there. And that's, let's make sure that we're following the center line, okay? So the center line is somewhere here. Let's get a darker red very hot color put that in there there we go a little bit more pinkish there still very dark and let's just take from these colors now so there's a warm flesh tone but not as hot as that all right so now let's go ahead and reevaluate the bottom plane of the orbicularis oris comes out to there and that's there's a little bit of a darker shape here so let's go ahead and put that in and that's the value that I'm trying to get now let's go ahead and mix some of these colors here so we're taking from the hot uh, colors let's go right on top very simple there and the idea is to keep your shape simple and easy to work with. Simple and easy to work with. I can easily move that mouth, the structure of the mouth, if I wanted to. If I found out that it was in the wrong place, I could easily move it. But again, I'm not trying to copy uh, what I'm looking at. A little bit of a darker accent here. And while we have these dark shapes, let's go ahead and reevaluate the eyes. Starting off with a very simple shape there just like we did with the charcoal so that's one little accent for the eye 
and we have another right there. All right, so now let's follow through on the other side. Now you can see that we're starting to construct even more specificity. Now let's make sure to observe this angle and it does come somewhat like this. All right, so this comes out a little dark shape there. And the dark shape right about there. Keep your shapes simple and easy to work with. So let's take from these tones. Let's make it a little bit warmer. Dark shape right there. Dark shape right here for the upper eyelid. And there's going to even be a little hint of the iris. Little hint for the iris. And another little hint for the iris here. Fan brush. I'm going to use the fan brush to, as you know, eliminate glare. So now with the same brush, I'm going to take some of these shapes here and just start to indicate the uh, little crease here for the upper eyelid. Don't need too much for that right now. Upper eyelid. Taking from the cooler colors now, and I get a lot of questions about eyebrows, what colors to make eyebrows. They're typically a little bit cooler, and if you have raw umber, a little bit of raw umber, yellow ochre, and some flake white ought to do the trick. Titanium works just fine too. little dark shape there for the eyebrow. Comes down to about there. Let's take from the, uh, let's, let's use some ultramarine blue right into that. Trying to get the characteristics of the eyebrows. All right, now the shape comes a little higher up. This one comes a little higher up. And if anything, just make sure that the eyebrows follow the structure of the eye sockets. And again, fan brush. Just to help us eliminate the glare. Standing back. Whoops, that angle is a little bit too sharp like that. It needs to be more flat. So let's go ahead and just take this very forgiving brush. Just push that down. No one has to know. Just pushing that down. Let's make sure to compare these angles to one another. This comes down a little further. Switching to the fan brush. All right, so let's do, let's add some specificity onto the nose as well. As well. So then now this shape will come down. And again, making all of these observations by eye. Comes down here. Yeah, somewhere about there. Fan brush. Now with the same brush, I'm going to take from the cooler blush tone. And we have just a little dark shape here. Very simple. I'm kind of working from the inside out really, uh, working from these inner shapes outwards. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. So I have my odorless mineral spirits in a little container here. So I pretty much just dip it into the mineral spirits and just dab it dry on some paper towel trying to make it as dry as possible now again back to these warmer tones a little bit lighter here there we go now we're starting to add even more specificity now the nose let's put in a little light for the nose here little highlight for the nose there. 
Now let's paint in this little dark light. So let's take from the dark, uh, darker flesh tones on the palette, darker, warmer flesh tones from the palette. Let's contrast this very warm dark. So it's a very warm dark. Back to the fan brush. It's a very warm dark, so let's just take from these colors. They're almost fitting perfectly, really. And let's just make the brush stroke in this direction. Notice how much it's glaring. And that's why we have the fan brush. Now let's use a little bit of a lighter warm flesh tone. Lighter warm flesh tone. That shape comes out to about there. This comes out, I'm trying to make that transition a little softer kind of by tapping. All right, so now let's go ahead and try to connect this side plane of the nose to the side of the concavity of the eye socket. The shape comes out to about there. And I'm making it a little bit darker than need be. So let's go ahead and come back in uh, with a lighter warm flesh tone. Just making that a little bit lighter. All right, so now let's Look at the connectivity from this shape to this shape. It's gonna get a little bit lighter here. A little bit warmer. A little bit lighter and warmer here. Cooler and darker here. Let's just use the fan brush again. Now there's gonna be a little bit of light there, a little more light than I'm describing. So let's go ahead and just, let's, let's actually take from this one here, this very bright, warm color. And let's even add a little bit of yellow ochre into that. Right here. Notice I'm very softly applying the paint. A little bit more pink. Now we're really starting to get into these transitions. Now then let's take a look now at this little edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use just a very a clean soft sable brush and I'm going to kind of just blend these edges together for now. And that should soften that edge. Just wanted to soften it. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this shape right here. So let's take from the warmer color Valley is actually going to be a little bit lighter there. Now that this is a very subtle transition of tone now, so we're going to make this shape darker, but very subtle. This is very subtle now. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty stuff. Go ahead and use the fan brush. And again, there's a little bit of light there. Let's use this light. Very bright highlight right about there, resting on top of the upper eyelid. Shoot, there's even one little light right here. There we have it. Now, Following through to the other eye, let's paint in that highlight. It's a very dominating highlight that rests right on the center line of the orbit of the eye, meaning in the center, right about here. 
very bright light there. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this outside shape. So this is kind of where I'm going to start to juggle back and forth uh, between dark tones uh, and light tones. So this, uh, believe it or not, I would consider uh, the light tone. So this is going to be the dark light. So this is a tone that's still in light. It's pretty much the tone just as you approach uh, the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in the warmer plane change. So let's use this right here. Take a ride from that. I'm going to bounce back and forth between these. And I'm really trying to build these plane changes now. See so there, we have one, two, onto the painting. Three, four, back onto the painting. Now let's switch back to the dark, dark shape. So let's just use this one for that. Paint in this little dark shape, cutting in right about like that. And that's how we're going to start these transitions. Not very specific yet, so we're going to build the specificity onto that. So these colors are really cool, very cold. So they're dark, but they're very cold, these colors here. These dark, these colors are very dark, uh, but warmer. So we're contrasting between the warm colors, the cool colors, even in the darks, even in the darks. Back to the fan brush, trying to eliminate the glare there. Now again, let's go ahead and rework that edge. Just trying to make that edge a little bit more exacting to what I'm looking at. Back to these darker shapes. Let's use this shape right there. All right, so after spending quite a bit of time on the big shapes, it's now time to get out the little brushes and uh, pay some respect to the smaller shapes. So I'm going to focus on this eye and I'm going to spend quite a bit of time uh, analyzing and just observing the shapes. Uh, so notice that this dark shape comes all the way down here. Now I'm going to uh, get a little bit of a cooler color from the palette. Remember I have a uh, a set of cool colors and warm flesh colors on my palette so I'm pretty much going to be just picking and choosing so now this area is a little bit darker and it's a little bit cooler and this is going to be the sclera of the eye the white of the eye which you can clearly tell here is not white so at this point my concern is actually more focused on the I'm more focused on the tones the tonality of the picture so now I'm focused on the small and minute value changes notice how this plane is getting a little bit darker so we're just going to make it darker now I'm going to switch to the fan brush just to soften along the way. Now there's going to be a little bit of light catching on the top plane of the lower eyelid. Very little. I'm going to switch back to the darker brush. I'm going to observe this little transition now. Now that comes in like that. Now with a very tiny brush and just taking a middle tone from my palette right here there's going to be a little bridge. 
And that's a little bridge that's connecting the uh, side of the concavity of the eye socket to the lower eyelid just beneath the tear duct. It's going to be a little darker right here. That's going to be the tear duct. Very dark shape there for the tear duct. And now then, I'm going to move to the middle tone region of the warm flesh tones. And right here, we're going to have a very definitive plane change. And it's going to be darker. It's going to be a little bit darker here. Darker than, say, this area here. So not even the eyelid is going to have planes. Even the eyelid's going to have plane changes. Now let's take from the cooler flesh tones and lighter in value. And we have that this is going to be very light. But of course, it's not going to be that bright. So let's switch to the warmer flesh tones. Now the middle tone of the warmer flesh tones. Just kind of scattering that light around. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the warmer, lighter flesh tones. This area is going to be much warmer. Closer to the pink area. Red pink area. Now I have to pay attention to the value. Now, what I'm wondering is the difference between the value on the upper eyelid versus the value right above it. So, uh, after squinting my eyes, squinting helps to see the uh, changes in value and it also helps to eliminate detail. I perceive this shape here right above the upper eyelid to be a tiny bit lighter. So this is going to be a tiny bit lighter than this. Now I'm going to uh, look at the side of the eye socket and this value change is going to be very subtle. There's going to be a very subtle gradation of value. So let's go and paint that in there. Now remember subtlety, it just, the word subtlety in painting just means how close can you get something to something else? Meaning with these tones, how close can I get these values to one another? yet maintain uh, the integrity of the value changes. Meaning, okay, so this area here is going to be darker, right? So this is going to be darker, but it's not going to be that dark. It's not going to, certainly not going to be as dark as this. So I have to now observe this value transition here. How close can I make these values to one another yet still keep this area dark? And this is the a little bit on the cooler side of the uh, flesh tones. Now I'm just going to go ahead with the uh, alizarin permanent and a little bit of burn umber. Just reinforce this little shape. Now we're going to do the same kind of thing to the other eye. So I'm going to look at first uh, the color of the sclera. 
So this tone is going to be a little on the cooler side. Remember the sclera is the white of the eye. And again, it's obviously not white. And there's gonna be that little touch of light catching right about here. Now let's use the fan brush to eliminate the glare. Now I see that there needs to be a much more subtle transition of tone in this area here on the side of the upper eyelid. Very subtle transition of tone. And all of that is leading towards the region of the tear duct right here so this little area of the tear duct is going to be lighter you can see the story as the tones go uh, light dark really dark light again and then half tone over here just spend a lot of time observing spend as much time observing as you do painting. It's going to be a little lighter there. And now again, there's going to be another little subtle transition of tone here. Need to make it even more subtle. I'm going to use the fan brush again. Very subtle plane changes here, so this area is going to be darker. Now back to the combination of the alizarin crimson permanent and some burnt umber on the darker region of the warmer flush tones. We're going to now just paint in this little crease. And that's it. Alright, so now... I'm going to compare the upper eyelid uh, to this structure. And I see that I can describe the plane change. So this lighter plane change, I see that I can describe it a little better. So uh, let's make it a little lighter. A little lighter first. So that is a very definitive plane change. And now uh, it gets darker around here and more pink, but it gets lighter up here. It gets lighter, but not as light as this plane. See how we're starting to create more form now. Now let's use the fan brush. Again, there's a lot of glare from my perspective. And that's one of the challenges in working with oil paint is the glare. So again, let's go ahead and reassess that transition. It's a little closer. Uh, now, this area is clearly lighter than this area here on the eyelid. Let's go ahead and just reinforce this little little shape there. Now, as we approach the side of the eye socket, this area needs to be darker, but it's going to be a subtle value transition. Very subtle. Almost imperceptible. It's going to be an imperceptible value change. Something like that. And then, of course, we have a little bit of light on the top plane of the lower eyelid. Now this part's going to be tricky and it might take a few tries. So I'm going to have my dark brush ready to make any kind of corrections. So I'm seeing a little bit of light catching right here. And then 
curves all the way in there. And now there's going to be the little light again. I think I got it. Not sure. I have to stand back and reevaluate that. And it's fairly close, fairly close. So let's just paint in this little dark. And uh, shoot, let's put in some of the eyelashes. Why not? Don't be afraid of eyelashes. But don't ain't paint individual eyelashes either. Just painting in a shape for that. And brush. And just to add a little bit of icing on the cake, let's go ahead and just reinforce this little highlight here. All right, so here's the bottom of the orbicularis, or for the mouth, right around here. And there's a little transitioning value here. This is pretty, um, it's pretty cool in temperature in relation to, say, the lip. I'm just going to work on that transition, thinking about the edge quality along with the temperature of these shapes. So this edge is very soft. It's a very gentle uh, edge. And even this little edge here, this is still too sharp. So let's go ahead and make it even softer. And let's use the fan brush to eliminate any glare we might have created. Now let's throw in a little bit of light here for the uh, lower lip. It's catching a little bit of light. Right about there. And then let's punch up the warmth and let's take from that uh, the cadmium red alizarin crimson permanent mixture we made earlier. Just a little bit of red there. Let's throw in some more Alizarin. Very red there. And a little bit red and dark right about there. And red but lighter about here. A little bit lighter even here. And again, let's make sure to pay attention to these edges. I'm going to use the fan brush again. So with a little more cadmium red medium and some flake white into that uh, red value scale, let's go ahead and just lighten this a little bit more. So a few little touches there. Just soften that. Now let's go back into the background color. So I'm going to go ahead with the ivory black again and the ultramarine blue. And a little touch of titanium white, a little bit of burnt umber. And I actually want this value for the background to get a little darker. Uh, so yeah, something about that. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in uh, the rest of this shape now. All right, now let's go back into the hair. So I'm going to mix with the same brush the ivory black and the alizarin Crimson Permanent. Let's just mix all of this in here. And go ahead and reassess this shape here. Now this is a very tricky shape just because of the glare really. So I'm going to go ahead and just make the brush stroke in this direction to get the shape of the hair. Um, but notice how it's glaring pretty bad so I'm going to go and uh, Try to eliminate the glare with the fan brush. 
And uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm actually going to add a little bit of medium now. Uh, so I'm going to use a tiny bit of Neil McGilp. And it is a gel-like medium. So I just add a little bit. Notice how it thins out the paint. Neil McGilp is a gel. And so I just dip it into the gel. Dab the brush dry a little bit on the paper towel. And that's about it. So I'm going to use that now to help with the paint uh, application. So the idea is that uh, thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. That's especially useful in working wet on wet or ala prima. So that's what we're utilizing here for these shapes of the hair. Notice how it's starting to stick a little better. Now in the beginning, well, for the majority of the painting, there was no medium. We didn't use any medium, so I didn't I didn't even use medium in the portrait, actually. This surface is pretty slick, so I didn't really need medium for the flesh tones, which is always a plus. So let's go ahead and paint in this little shape for the hair. Looks like it should come out to about like that and fold in. And there's just a little more of the bottom of the neck that's showing, so let's just take some of this darker flesh tone, just combine the warm and the cool, and just throw that in there. Soften that edge. So let's just make this lighter. Now we're going to come back in um, with the rest of the hair. Now remember we used a little bit of Neo McGilp. Uh, the medium that is to thin out the paint a little bit so that's why the paint is going a little bit more freely it's moving down with a little more ease and let's just hold, go ahead and cover all of this a little more well, let's add a little bit more alizarin permanent. Just throw that in there. Very nice shape there. Let's just unify this whole mass. Grand unification theory right here. Alright, so remember the shoulders are going to fall a little bit higher up on a horizontal than the bottom of the chin. So I'm actually going to use a darker mixture. So I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and ivory black together with a little bit of Neil McGilp. And there, why not? Right about there. We're going to have the clothing sweater that our model is wearing. And let's go ahead and follow through with the other side. And it's about there. But I'll tell you what, there's going to be this uh, cast shadow here. At first I didn't want to put it, uh, but let's just go ahead and put it in there. There's our cast shadow. Interesting. Now it looks like the model is actually standing in front of a wall. Or in this case, sitting. So, okay, a little bit of background color again so we're going to have to now cover this area with the background color so let's go ahead and cover the rest of it now all right so we went ahead and covered the rest of the background um, now after covering that covering that I see that um, I kind of want at least this region of the hair to be a little darker. So I'm going to uh, try to make a very dark dark still not using straight ivory black so ivory black and let's use a warm cool contrast in the darks. So let's be a little tricky here. So we're going to use a combination of the alizarin crimson permanent and the ivory black to contrast 
right here. So this is a dark, cool color. This is going to be a dark, warm color to help contrast the dark shapes of the hair from the dark shapes on the background. So that's another way that you can use um, a warm color to contrast against a cool color. It'll add even even more depth than if it were just in monochrome. Maybe throw in some little accents of dark here just for fun. Just for fun. Just throwing in some little accents there. And now I'm going to take one of the brushes that I use for the flesh tones and you might know where I'm going with this. So I usually um, will use some of the flesh tone to paint in some of the lights for the hair. And I'm going to do that. Just a few little spots of light there. Again, just taking from the flesh tone. So the idea is the dark of the hair will mix with the warmth of the flesh tone and create a nice little color for the light on the hair, in theory. A little bit of light there. Again, let's use the fan brush to eliminate the glare. And selectively, I'm selectively choosing which lights I want to put in for the hair. Not trying to go overboard with this. And let's say there's a little, little light over here. And there, something like that. Now, I didn't notice until I stood back and looked at my camera. Pretty nasty glare there. And so let's go ahead and test the uh, usefulness of our fan brush. Glare be gone. And looks like that worked. So I highly recommend these. I usually uh, use, uh, as you've seen before, a pretty cheap uh, synthetic brush, a large synthetic brush as my fan brush. But I decided to get an actual fan brush and I'll read this one out to you just because I really like it. It is a Princeton, it says two, Princeton Select Fan. Uh, little item number 3750 FN-2. Hope that information helps you out. I don't usually do that, but I really like this fan brush and I want you to have the best materials that you can. And again, if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, of course, all of that information will be typed up for you in the description box below. All right, so one of the very last things I'll do is uh, soften some of these edges with a clean, uh, soft brush. So let's go ahead and just soften this little transition here. And again, all of the paint is still wet, so that's what's allowing me to soften these edges. And uh, let's look at this edge here. Soften it just a little bit. And with the fan brush, I'm going to soften this shape, actually, just a tiny bit. And then let's go ahead and soften this now. Very tiny little changes here. Just softening this. And with that, we have the conclusion of this week's portrait painting demonstration. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. I really hope that these videos are helping you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one. 
I'd like to take a quick second to give a very special thank you to a viewer by the name Gisela. I hope I can pronounce your name correctly. I'd like to thank you for not only watching my painting video, but also painting along with me. It really does fill my heart with joy to see that others are painting along with me. It really did make my day to see this. Thank you so much for sharing. And if any of you uh, would like to share your artwork with me, please feel free to contact me through my Instagram account or my website email. I'll see you on the next one.